This is one of Sony's cheapest and best-selling lenses of all time. And this is a newly released lens of the same focal length that is significantly better in a number of different ways. Raising the question, has this new lens just killed off Sony's best selling lens? Now there might be a couple reasons that you would still go with the Sony lens and I will come back to those later in the video. Now because this is a new release lens, there's only a couple of places that have it in stock and there is limited availability. So I have put some links in the description down below to where you can get the lens. This lens was sent to me for the purpose of making this video. I did not pay pay for it, but this is not a paid or sponsored video. This lens is a 50 millimeter f 1.8 lens made by Seven Artisans, and it is Seven Artisans first autofocus lens, but I don't want that to scare you because the autofocus performance is on par with the native Sony lens, and in some ways it's actually better. And I will come back to some examples of that later in the video. For most photographers, a nifty 50 or a 50 millimeter f 1.8 lens is the next lens they buy after their kit lens. And that's for a couple of reasons. One is it's almost always the cheapest prime lens or fixed focal length lens that you can buy from any of the manufacturers. Where you look at Nikon, Canon, or Sony, they all have a cheap 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, making it a natural progression from your kit lens. The second reason is 50 millimeters is really a great focal length, particularly for beginning photographers. And that's because it's versatile enough to use it for a range of different applications, but the 50 millimeter field of view is not so wide that it becomes challenging to frame a photo and create a compelling image. 50 millimeters is kind of a Goldilocks focal length that allows a beginning or inexperienced photographer to take really nice photos. The other thing is that f1.8 aperture, that's going to allow you to blur your background. So when you're trying to isolate a subject in the frame, have something that's sharp and detailed in focus and have the background blown out and blurry, the f1.8 and a nifty 50 is going to allow you to achieve that. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to get you much better and cleaner photo results in low light conditions than your kit lens. Your kit lens at 50 millimeters is probably gonna be at f5.6 or something like that. f1.8 is going to allow so much more light in, you are going to get a much cleaner image. You're also going to be able to use a faster shutter speed so you have less chance of motion blur or handshake blur when you're taking that photo. And 50 millimeters is gonna be great for a range of different things. It's gonna be great for travel, whether you're out with your family, traveling around the world, walking around a city, taking pictures of the sites. It's gonna be great for food photography. Lots of people when they're traveling are eating different foods, exotic foods. It's an excellent focal length for food photography. It's also a great focal length for automotive photography and cars. You can get back and get a nice image of an entire car in a scene, but you can also get close up and get some compelling detail shots of different parts of the car. It's a great versatile focal length for that. All you gotta do is stop it down if you wanna get the whole car in focus, or maybe you wanna get close, open that aperture up, and really draw the viewer's eye to a specific detail. In professional use, it also works great for product photography. And 50 millimeters is one of my favorite focal lengths for product photography. And in the past, I've done a number of professional product photography shoots, and most of those were done with a nifty 50 lens like this. But the other thing it's gonna be great for is portrait photography. And early on in most people's photography journey, when they get their big camera, they wanna take a blurry background portrait where a person is sharp and detailed in the center of frame and the background is blown out and blurry. And a 50 millimeter f1.8 is absolutely perfect for that and allows you to get that look and it also creates a very natural and flattering look at someone's face. A wider focal length can, can sometimes distort their features and not be flattering, or you can get a situation where a longer focal length can sometimes flatten out somebody's face and not be flattering. So somewhere between 50 and 85 is often considered the perfect focal length for portrait and headshots. So for the vast majority of beginning photographers, the 50 millimeter f1.8 lens is their next lens after the kit lens, and most of their favorite photos have come out of that lens. And even once you're well into your photography journey, you're still gonna find this a super versatile focal length. And I think most pros included 
will have a 50 millimeter in their bag somewhere when they're shooting. So a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens is a great lens to have, but how does this new 50 millimeter compare to Sony's old 50 millimeter? Well, the first thing that's gonna stand out to you before you even take a photo is when you pick these lenses up. The Sony lens is an entirely plastic lens. It feels probably even cheaper than the kit lens that came with your camera. It definitely feels like a budget lens. It does have a metal lens mount, but beyond that, everything else that you feel, touch, and see on this lens is plastic. This new third-party lens is almost entirely metal across the entire lens. It has a polished metal lens mount. It is noticeably heavier, so depending on what you're going for, the Sony's lighter weight might be an advantage to you. But I think most people that are buying their next lens after the kit lens don't want another lens that sort of feels and looks cheap. They want to feel like they're getting something that is an upgrade from their kit lens. And when you pick up this lens, you are definitely going to feel like this is a significant upgrade from your kit lens. The other thing you're going to notice about this lens that the Sony lens doesn't have is it has an aperture ring on it, which allows you to control your aperture from the lens itself. So you slide that back and forth, you can turn it into auto A mode and that will turn the control back over to your camera or you can set it manually on the lens. You also have an autofocus manual focus switch which you can switch back and forth to control your autofocus function. Neither of these are available on the cheap Nifty 50 from Sony. In addition to that, the current list price on this lens is actually lower than that of the cheaper looking Sony model. Although the Sony is currently on sale, and I will put a link to that in the description down below, this, the sale price on the Sony as well. So depending on the time that you're watching this video, they could be one cheaper than the other, but they're very, very similar. The next big difference, particularly if you're a hybrid shooter or you do a lot of shooting in video, is the Sony has the most horrendous focus noise when you are using this lens. You can hear it in the internal microphones in the camera, and even an on-camera microphone will likely pick this up. The new lens is so much quieter, so much smoother, doesn't have all that clicking, and it's almost embarrassing how bad the Sony is. It really feels like an old DSLR lens or something like that. And I'll just leave a little bit of a sample here so you can listen to the focus noise difference between the two lenses. Looking at the image quality rendered by these two lenses, it is so close that at times I almost couldn't tell the difference between the two and I had to look at the metadata in the file to figure out which one I was shooting with. But there are a couple subtle differences and I wanna point those out because they really could be a matter of personal preference. To start with, and when you look at the sharpness, they are virtually identical. Shooting them both wide open, I really struggled to tell the difference. I thought maybe at f1.8, the Sony had a slight edge in contrast, but honestly, it was so close, you would have to zoom into 400%, and even then, it was hard to tell the difference. Once we went to f2.8, I literally could not tell the difference between either of them. The Seven Artisans is sharper in the corner shot at f1.8. This is something you won't notice in real world results, but if you shoot a test chart, you will pick this up. Looking at the quality of the background blur, the new lens has more of what, what I would consider kind of a swirly looking bokeh effect, and the specular highlights on the edge of frame are a little bit more uh, sort of lemon shaped, similar to other swirly bokeh style lenses, where the Sony still has a little bit of that sort of lemon shape or that wedge shape, but it's a little bit less pronounced. When we look at the general background blur, the things that are not specular highlights, I think the Sony has a little bit more jagged edges and distracting in situations like maybe foliage or more complicated out of focus areas. And I think the new lens is slightly softer and has a little bit more pleasing background blur in those situations. But we're really talking about pixel peeping to differentiate between any of these different image characters. 
Looking at lens flare performance, with the seven artisans, you get traditional lens flare streaks and little circles dancing in the image, which is sort of reflections within the lens itself. With the Sony, you do not get that, but what you do get is some strong veiling and desaturation when you have a light at the edge of frame. So I don't think one is better than the other, but they perform differently. We have a similar situation with the vignette performance. We have a noticeable but not heavy vignette at f1.8, which is almost completely cleared up by f2.8. And I think the performance is so similar, I would not choose between these two lenses based on vignette performance. And honestly, I think these lenses are so similar. If I had one, I probably wouldn't buy the other one as an upgrade. But if I didn't have either of these lenses, I think if you're interested in a very lightweight lens, I think that's when I would go with the Sony. If you want a more premium feeling shooting experience and you want to feel more like you're shooting with one of Sony's higher end lenses or a G Master, going with the all metal lens with the aperture control and manual focus autofocus switch on the lens, I think will give you a more premium shooting experience. Now, buying a new lens is only one way to improve the quality of your photos or videos. And I've just thrown a video on screen now. I think this is the best tutorial I have ever done on photography. And I'd be very surprised if you weren't a better photographer at the end of that video than you are right now.